Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear learners. This is a video for the subject of education for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Educational Technology Part 2. This video lecture is based on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and here we are going to have an introduction of learner controlled instruction or LCI. This video lecture is recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator and the presenter of this video is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Dr. Savita Kaushal from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTS Swayam Prabha channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies in Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today, we are going to start a discussion on the emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and the topic of today's lecture is based on the introduction of the learner controlled instruction or in short we can call it LCI. So let us start the discussion first with the objectives of the session. The objectives of this session are to discuss the need and origin of learner controlled instruction to elaborate the meaning and nature of learner controlled instruction and to define the learner controlled instruction. What exactly we mean by a learner controlled instruction? Various psychologists all over the world agree that there lie wide individual differences among the learners and therefore they strongly believe in tailoring the learning or education of the learners in accordance with their individualities. What does it mean? That every individual, every child is unique in the uh, qualities, in nature, and also the requirements which the child is having. So we are, as an educationist, required to develop systems according to the need and to the uh, requirement of a child or an individual. It has resulted in the persistent effort on the part of the educationist for the individualization of the process of instruction. And in this way, the task of the individualization of instruction in its very simple meaning may stand for the uh, creation of uh, the instruction or you can say that uh, it is a task of developing the instruction to the individual needs and abilities of the learner or basically we try to array or we try to make an arrangement for the learner the type of learning which this learner thinks or feels is most appropriate for him or her and for the purpose of this particular uh, way of providing learning we do a lot of efforts and we will be talking about these efforts, what exactly is done in terms of providing uh, or catering to the needs and abilities of an individual learner in this session. So for carrying out the task of this learner controlled uh, instruction for developing this type of instruction, there were many researches which were happening from a long time and the researchers were struggling for uh, developing a number of proper instructional plans and schedules uh, for making learning process much more appropriate for the learners. What exactly are the outcomes of those uh, particular researches? We can just list out a few like the programmed instruction or programmed learning is one of those. Then the learner controlled instruction or LCI on which this particular session is based on personalized system of instruction or PSI, computer assisted instruction, which is also acronymed as CAI and computer managed instruction or CMI. 
and we have already uh, seen a lot of things in terms of uh, uh, these individualization of uh, uh, learning in this lecture we will be focusing on the learner controlled instruction we will see that what are the peculiar features which make the learner controlled instruction the way in which it is uh, known for so let us try to see that what exactly is the nitty-gritty of learner controlled instruction the first thing which will be discussed here that what exactly is the origin point and before the origin point why this learner controlled instruction was needed what was the need basic need which was the basis for developing such a type of way of instruction the programmed instructions which stands for the individualization of the instructional process which is a very well known fact that the programmed learning or programmed instructions are also working for the individualization of the instructional process what happens in a programmed learning that the programmer develops the programmed instructional material catering to the needs of a particular category of individual learner in the actual practice the story is very much different when the individual learner try to make use of such programmed material basically uh, when this process happens when uh, once this uh, learner is actually trying to make use of the programmed learning material basically they feel handicapped because it does not suit what they need and wish to do and study because the entire process is somehow designed in a way uh, that that is felt the best by the programmer so here arises a need of such a programmed material or learning sequence that can suit the the requirement of the individual or you can say that the present requirement which this individual is having so in this way in the programmed material they have no choice but they have to carry on the uh, instruction uh, with with what the programmer or the teacher has planned the instruction so this is something where the programmed learning or the process which is uh, designed for uh, the students the purpose of uh, providing best uh, type of uh, uh, education to the students is somehow um, a little bit uh, lacuna is seen so now what can be done let us see that what exactly is the way out in which the programmed learning when it was felt that the programmed learning needs certain improvements then what was basic uh, criteria or what was the basic thing which was changed so that the the problem of uh, this uh, programmed learning can be solved so in the programmed learning the students were supposed to follow all the instructions of the programmer and as we have seen that in the traditional learning or the traditional teaching methodology the students are not the masters of their own destiny they have no choice or freedom of their own uh, basically to carry on their studies by themselves or by their own means or by their own way the learning experiences are not planned and sequenced by them as per their own requirements this needs a check if we want to introduce in letter and spirit an instruction that is worth a name for individualized instruction so basically the motive was that we can introduce a system which is which is actually individualizing the entire process of instruction and then when this need was felt in the year 1961 it was robert major and his associates who were actually working on developing a model of instruction which was very much different from the traditional or the uh, traditional teaching methodology 
in which the instructional material or learning sequence were to be planned not by some other person or some other teacher or programmer but by the learner himself or herself so they did a number of experimental studies the team of robert major and um, there was a big team which was uh, working on the development of this instructional technique so they did a lot of experimental studies for providing the validity and workability of this new method which was somehow a kind of uh, revolution revolutionary because here the entire way of learning the path of learning everything was to be uh, covered or to be to be planned by the learner himself or herself so these are a uh, few of those needs and uh, the works which were done for the development of the individualized learning methodologies so there were few things or few experiments which the team of robert major did what they did the first uh, experimental study which they did the objective was to ascertain whether the learner generated sequence of learning basically tend to differ from the program generated sequences of learning or not so what they did six students along with an instructor were taken and they were basically made the part of their study these uh, base, these students basically had to learn about electronics they were given full freedom to take decision about the sequencing of their own learning they were free to put questions to the instructor and use the instructor in a way as a resource person so the six students and one instructor were the part of this particular research the instructor was present during this experiment all the time but this instructor was responsive rather than directive so the the instructor was not giving any directions he or she the the instructor was only providing responses to the queries of the students this instructor's role was limited to work as a resource person only to respond to the students question or lead them rather than providing any direction everything regarding the learning behavior of these students along with the learning sequences generated by them for achieving their learning objectives was fully recorded to arrive at the desired generalization so this was the first experiment which the team of robert major did another study which was conducted by major and uh, mcken in the year 1961 itself on the engineering graduates of an industrial training institute here the learners were first provided with the detailed behaviorally stated learning objectives so the objectives were planned in a very behavioral way and then they were asked to pro uh, proceed on their learning path as they wished by developing their own sequences of learning so basically the learning objectives were decided and it were given the, all those um, objectives were given to these engineering graduates and then they were asked to proceed on the path which they were willing to proceed so by permitting the learners to instruct themselves in any way and in any order uh, that these uh, students were choosing the way was properly cleared for providing them a total control on the process of instruction then the uh, researcher waited for the outcomes of learning and the comparison uh, was done uh, these outcomes which were uh, received from this uh, particular uh, experiment what was done the experimenter basically compared these outcomes with those of the previous learning performed through the learning sequences determined by the programmer or a teacher what they found basically they found that the learner controlled instructional system propagated by them helped in saving 65% of the time in comparison to the old teacher controlled instructional system which you can see that is a substantial percentage so this the other experiment was a kind of eye opener 
for the team of Robert Major and um, the other person who was Mekin. And they basically got the idea that this type of system where the learner is having the control on the entire process of instruction is somehow a kind of revolutionary in the process of learning and also teaching. So by these two experiments or the two studies which they did, they came out concluding few of the points. What are these points? Let us discuss one by one. They concluded that the learner takes much interest in learning the things if the learner is provided opportunity to develop his or her own sequence of learning. Then the learner is one of the best sources of information about himself or herself. And therefore, in taking decision about the initial behavior of this particular learner, it is the learner who must be given due recognition. It, it should not be anybody else. It should be the learner who should be given the most important role in the process of providing information or providing the uh, learning methodology or giving the initial behavior. Then the learner generative sequences tend to differ from the programmed or teacher generated learning sequence. Let's take an example. The students at the initial stage are not interested in theory. They want practical things. They want uh, concrete things to be discussed rather than the abstract things. And functions of the things rather than the structure. Because they all they want a lot of interest and a lot of activity to be happening in the classroom. And accordingly, they are likely to put the questions how the things are operated. Let's take the example of any of the devices, a radio. So they will ask the question that how this radio is being operated or how it works. Before asking the question regarding what makes it work, how it is created or how it is developed. So they will ask the question that how we can make it functional or how we can uh, get it, get the uh, this particular device operated or how we can start the device or run the device. So this is the basic difference between the way of questioning and the way of uh, in which the process of instruction is basically going to start. So the learner should be given a proper say in setting the instructional objectives as it is the learner himself or herself who has better knowledge of needs, interests and the abilities for helping this learner to reach the goal. The time and energy of both the learner and the teacher can be saved by making the instructional process learner controlled rather it's being teacher centered and teacher controlled so if the learner is taking hold of the entire teaching learning process the time and energy of both the individuals the learner as well as the teacher is going to be saved because the needs and uh, all those things will be kept in front of the process the teaching learning process and no time is going to be wasted because here the learner is actually wherever the interest is going on, the learner is going to, uh, to uh, make the, uh, the way for the process of learning and also teaching. So these were few of those conclusions which they draw, the team of Robert Major draw uh, in terms of uh, all those experiments which we did in terms of uh, developing a method which is very much controlled by the uh, by the learner or by the student himself or herself. So in this way, the attempts to discover a, a kind of a novel way of individualized instruction in the context of industrial training, Robert Major and his associates brought forward a new procedure of method of instruction, which is known as LCI 
or learner controlled instruction they first tried it to make the individual or uh, the 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 learner or the student learn about the topic electronics and later recommended it for the learning of the topics related to other fields of studies so because the experimentation was done on the uh, subject of electronics so that that's why in the beginning it was referred to the students of electronics and engineering and later on it was recommended because it was widely uh, seen that it is useful for others also so it was recommended for the other fields of studies as well let us now understand the meaning the nature and few of the definitions of this learner controlled instruction now we are clear about how it the need was felt and how this uh, particular uh, system was uh, uh, experimented and it got its origin so we have to understand that what exactly it means so as we can see that the name suggested that it is a learner controlled instruction basically it stands for the type or method of instruction which is controlled by the learner in the traditional teaching which is carried out by the individual teacher or maybe in few of the cases team teaching can be done where uh, the entire teaching process is handled by a team of teachers the entire scene of the teaching learning process is dominated by the teachers whether an ordinary textbook or uh, if we are uh, working on a programmed uh, process programmed learning process the the entire process is followed by or you can say that there is a learning sequence which is always predetermined and the learner has to travel along an already fixed learning path even in case of a textbook the learner has to follow the first chapter and then go to the next and then to the next and in case of a programmed learning the sequence is already decided which the learner has to follow so there is a fixed learning path with with almost uh, there is no uh, kind of voice or no say in the uh, instructional uh, process of this learner but in case of the learner controlled instruction basically it is an open revolt against the rigidity of learning path and the teacher centered system or teacher centric system of instruction it works on a simple thesis that an individual learner can learn better if the learner is provided opportunity to choose the path on his or her own the learning path should be decided or should be chosen by the learner himself or herself the learner is actually allowed to choose his or her own learning path develop his or her own sequence of learning so as we have seen that in the learner controlled instruction the learner is provided with the opportunity to choose his or her own learning path and develop his or her own sequence of learning and engaging himself or herself in learning the things which are related to a particular topic of their own choice by using the teacher or the instructor as a resource person here in this particular method the learner takes the lead and the teacher basically follows because the teacher's role is just to provide the responses not the instructions but the responses not the directions but only the responses so the teacher does not initiate the teacher remains silent until motivated and stimulated by the student with a variety of questions the students themselves decide what to ask what to do and how to proceed on the learning path for the realization of the objectives which are basically set and given to the learners the teacher is almost there but this teacher does does not actually act on or his or her own this teacher simply reacts and responds to the varying need of the student there is a close interaction between the teacher and the learner but the key of the instruction lies 
with the learner if the learner needs to learn this person can learn if this learner does not uh, is not willing to learn the teacher cannot compel him or her to learn so the teacher only creates favor favorable or uh, some sort of likely circumstances for inspiring and motivating the learner to feel the necessity of learning and to learn well with uh, with the the situations and his or her own means and methods because everything is to be decided by the learner in such learner controlled and learner dominated instructional situation the way the learner asks the question and the teacher responds is just reverse to the renowned pattern of socratic dialogue or the method of instruction adopted for instruction in gurukuls we in our country we we can see these gurukuls which which follow the socratic pattern of the method the dialogue method this is somehow a very different way a clear opposite of the gurukul system in socratic dialogue or traditional gurukuls or the uh, the this type of parshalas the instruction which this teacher is basically giving is the foremost important thing basically the teacher dominates the teacher is having the hold of the entire process this process of instruction is dominated by the teacher and here in this case we can find that the reverse is happening why because here the control is not in the hands of a teacher but with the student so it was uh, basically the uh, the teacher itself who is not going to initiate the process but the pupil or the learner who is going to take the lead and will decide will desire or will be deciding the goal here in the lci or in the learner controlled instruction it is the learner who holds the control of the teaching learning process by asking questions and making the teacher respond for helping him to reach his or her goal the most suitable example of learner controlled instruction comes from our famous epic uh, mahabharata where in the teaching of the bhagavad gita arjun as a pupil plays a significant role in deciding the learning sequence uh, arjun basically takes initiative puts a host of questions to his teacher who is at that moment krishna or uh, lord krishna who does not respond until persuaded to do to ask or pers persuaded uh, by his uh, disciple or the pupil uh, arjuna so it is arjun who controls the instructional process and learns what basically he is desiring to learn and what is the sole purpose to get the ultimate satisfaction so this is an analogy from the past but this type of learning is very much evident in the present days also and we will see that what are those ways in which lci is prevailing in the present day this old analogy shows us that how it was very uh, very kind of uh, important methods uh, of instruction which were even followed in the olden days so in this way we can understand the learner control instruction as the method or process of individualized instruction where the learner exercises full control over the total process of instruction right from the setting of objectives to their realization leading all the way throughout by making the teacher to assist or help the learner merely in the capacity of a good resource person so this can be a very crisp and 
clear definition for learner controlled instruction. What we have studied today, let us just try to recapitulate everything. In the field of individualization of instruction where programmed instructional approach is regarded as the initial breakthrough, the second major breakthrough was in the name of learner controlled instruction. This system was originated in the hands of Robert Major and many of his team members in the year 1961 through some notable conclusions drawn from their two experiments which they performed on the students of an industrial training institute. Basically, these were all engineering students. The system was first applied in making the individual student learn about the topics related to electronics and later on they recommended it for the learning of the topics which are related to other fields of studies. So it was a, a thoroughly experienced and thoroughly researched methodology and after these researches only it was recommended to other fields of studies. Then we have seen that LCI which refers to a method or process of individualized instruction where the learner exercises full control over the total process of instruction right from the setting of objectives to the realization of, of these objectives leading all the way throughout by making the teacher assist or help uh, the learners merely in the capacity of a good resource person. So the entire control of the process of learning is in the hands of the learner. This was the introductory part of the learner controlled instruction. These are few of those references and the links which were used for developing the lesson. You can also go ahead and read more. Let us see each other in another session another time. Thank you for this time. Good night. Dear learners, you were watching a video on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology. And this lecture is an introductory lecture related to learner controlled instruction or LCI. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.